Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's been a, a while since I made any kind of comments on YouTube, but uh, there was an interesting thing that happened to me last week. Somebody forwarded me uh, an article. I, don't, I didn't realize when the article was published. It was talking about how poor the Malaysian education system was and that if it kept on the same path, that it would only render Malaysians to be more ignorant and that it would eventually affect the household income. But there was a caveat there, and the caveat was that it may not affect household income if the, uh, the job security was there and if the economy continued to grow and develop. Then I found out that article was uh, some almost 10 years ago. But the fact that this article is being recirculated again it gives the impression as though nothing has changed with the Malaysian education system. And I can safely say that that is true. Nothing has changed. Nothing of good benefit has changed. It has just stayed on the same ignorant path for the past 10 years. What are we going to do about this? At what point are we going to say enough is enough? At what point are we going to approach our wakil rakyat, our representatives, and demand that the government change the policy for education. How long do we have to wait for this? At what point do we say we are not going to allow the youth of this country to be subject to suffering and great economic hardship in the future? Already now it is proving to be true. And this is not because, uh, solely because of the, of the global economic crisis or the global economic climate. It's not solely because of that. What we, what we suffer from is a dearth of educators, a dearth of the education uh, curriculum, a dearth of education policy. In other words, um, pursuant to my previous video where I said that uh, our, prob our problem is one of, uh, is a systemic problem. This means, when I say systemic, I don't simply mean that the curriculum should change. Everything about it should change the way we get our, our teaching staff, the way we, we allow teaching staff to be qualified, the way our curriculum is, the way our curriculum is written. Why does the Malaysian curriculum have to be, have to be uh, solely done by Malaysians if there are other better uh, syllabuses in the marketplace, then we should adopt those as well. Why should we just limit ourselves to what Malaysian writers can do? The teaching is another one. Our teaching quality is very, very poor. And it's precisely, again, a reflection of our universities, which show that our universities is also suffering from a dearth of intellectualism. Our universities are also suffering from a dearth of proper curriculum and study. And this, once again, is because politics has become involved in every facet of education. Every facet. Therefore, if we are talking about a systemic change, the entire political system also has to take note that this kind of thing is not going to be tolerated anymore. Therefore, I ask the viewers now, at what point do we say enough is enough? At what point do we approach the Wakil Rakyat and ask them to do their jobs that they were appointed for? Typically in this country, before you have an election, there's all kinds of promises being made. All kinds of talk about, oh, we want to defend you, we want to defend your right, we want to defend your priority. Everything is, you are the priority. But the minute they get into office, suddenly things change. They have no time for you. They're too busy going and officiating that uh, agenda, officiating this, opening that. They're too busy with all these kind of little nonsensical issues, whereas they're not tackling the real issues. Now, another thing I'd like to address, as far as this is concerned, whenever I make a suggestion about what should be done with the education system and how it should improve, there is always someone who's going to ask me, how do we design a Malaysian education system? <laughs> I'm talking about an education system. I'm not talking about a Malaysian education system. I'm talking about education in general. Education is the the genus, not the species. So whenever this question is asked, it gives me the impression that whoever's asking this question has some form of inferiority complex that is actually 
masked by a superiority complex. They think that the Malaysian education system or the Malaysian system can actually be develop into something which will be the envy of the world. When in reality, if you are an ignoramus and you are developing something which is not based on any kind of proper knowledge or truth, what will result is not something which will be the envy of the world. What will result is something which will be the ridicule of the world. And this is exactly what that report 10 years ago said. The man who was making the report was part of the World Economic Forum, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, or World Health. No, it wasn't World Health. But anyway, this man was a senior person. And he was the one who said that the Malaysian education system is terrible and it is going to affect household income. In other words, we are becoming stupider. We, at that time, he said that we are worse off than the, than the Vietnamese education system. And that was saying something. Because at one time, we were the envy of all of them. Now we are the ridicule. What happened? It's because our education system was so poor, what we had produced was not knowledge. What we had produced was gross ignorance, which was punctuated by arrogance. Because of that punctuation of arrogance, we were unable to see that we were ignorant indeed. How is it that we have so many professors in our universities? How did they get this? How did they get these titles of professors? There are so many of them, and yet they are not worthy of being called professor. There is a certain criteria you have to meet in order to become an associate professor and, a, and then subsequently a professor. There are several criteria you have to have. <clears throat> One of which is the number of books that you've written and what kind of an impact have those books had on the academia at large, global academia. Then you also have to have a certain number of refereed uh, uh, papers published in refereed journals. In other words, they were also examined by your peers of international standing who have, who have uh, come to the conclusion that yes, you deserve recognition. But the way I see it, professors in this country are not appointed based on that. They are appointed by politicians simply to fill a vacuum, to give you a job basically, because you're not qualified for anything else. Now, is that just, is that performing justice to the student who's trying to learn? He thinks that you are a professor of actual standing, when in reality you have nothing to offer except your own gross ignorance and negligence. And you pass that on to your students, who are then going to again believe that they have knowledge. And this vicious cycle returns again and again and again. This has already been entertained by my father more than 50 years ago, outlining what the problem was. He is a professor. He is a professor of global standings, a real true professor of global international repute. And yet, his own advice, his own learnings, his own, his own uh, knowledge has been completely ignored by the Malaysians. They are not interested in knowing truth. They are more interested in, 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 in believing in fantasy. They are more interested in believing in something which was concocted from the mind of a politically appointed professor or from the politician himself. What is going to happen? What should happen? We now have a new government. We now have a new prime minister. What is he going to do? We have looked at the budget for the education ministry, a huge budget, but a large proportion of that budget allocation is not going towards actually bettering the education system. It is more uh, emphasized on infrastructure. That boggles the mind. Every year it's the same thing. Billions goes to infrastructure, either to build new schools or to maintain the ones that are already there or to repair them. How is it we are not maintaining these buildings properly such that they become so derelict that it needs billions of dollars to fix? And the curriculum remains the same. The teachers remain as unqualified as before. So you are not actually making the education system better. Now is your opportunity. Of course, I've said this even before you, even before the current prime minister. 
I've said now is the time, now is the time, but it, it never seemed to be the time. I'm saying it again, now is the time. It's always the time. If you don't want to, if you want to ignore this and carry on as usual, then what will happen is a future where Malaysia is going to be ignored globally. Already now, we are like the caricature of ignorance. We have a poor education system, our people are not clever, we can't even speak properly, we don't know how to speak English properly, we don't, let alone Malay. I mean, you need to look in the mirror. What you are doing is not developing the education system. You are actually leaving it as it is, you are quite happy to remain ignorant, and you are quite happy to ask that your, uh, um, your, your, your charge, in other words, the people, the Ra'yat, that they remain ignorant, so that they will always look up to you. You are not the ones who have authority. It's because you have misunderstood this word. You think that authority is synonymous with power. That's not the case. Authority does not mean power. It also means your qualification, your knowledge. That's what authoritative means. It has to do with knowledge, not with power. But you think that. You, the politician in government now, who has become either minister, deputy minister, you think that you are all powerful, that you know all. You cannot be advised. You are above that. Whenever people like people like uh, professors in the university who actually know what they're talking about, want to give you sound advice, you don't want to listen to them. You would rather let your, your underlings look after them or take care of them. That's how they put it. You are not qualified to be there. You are only there simply because of the way you were appointed or elected. And the electorate also is ignorant. They don't understand. But they are not the arrogant type of ignorance. They are the kind that can learn. You, on the other hand, you know that you are not qualified to sit where you are, and yet you speak as if you are. That has to stop. You are not the ones holding or wielding any power. In this country where we have a dem democratic system, that everyone is supposed to be able to voice their, what they call opinions, some of those are good, and you have to listen to them. We are not saying that everyone has the right opinion, no. But look at the situation. Look at the situation now. Employment of graduates is very poor. The qualification to employments of these graduates is extremely poor. Businesses are finding it hard to employ them because they don't know a lot of things. The economy is suffering. And it will continue to suffer because of this. You can't have any kind of proper diplomacy because you don't know how to speak English properly. And English is a global language. So when are you going to wake up and realize that what you are doing is not actually trying to save Malaysia, is not actually trying to save one or, or all of the population? You're not doing that. You are just doing it for your own selfish reasons, to save yourself, to keep you employed. But listen, as I said, this is a democracy. If we are not happy with you, then you will leave. We will make you leave. This is what we need to consider. I was surprised when I saw this article and found out that it was 10 years old and it's now being recirculated again because people are still... Uh, um, Cognizant of the fact that the Malaysian education system is so poor. It's terrible. The standards in the universities are becoming worse and worse. It's because the people who are there, who are professorial material in the universities, are really not professorial material. And therefore they are not giving any kind of proper education. That's number one. Number two, the fact that we have a quota and this quota is not <coughs> determinant upon qualification. Rather, it is determinant upon your race. That is actually a negative for the person who is trying to admit himself to university and get a good education, no matter what race you are. 
If you are a Malay race and you are not doing well in school and you are, you, because of your, your, your race you get admitted to university whereas somebody else doesn't, it is actually a disadvantage to you if you're not qualified. I don't know when it'll, it'll be before you realize that. Your entry to university has to be based on your qualification. And if you reduce the standard of qualification for entry to the university, you're going to reduce the standard of the university. When you reduce that standard, the ones who are there, who are properly trained and qualified, will feel that they can't teach people who are un, unteachable. And therefore, they will find greener pastures somewhere else. And then comes in the next wave of professors to fill their places. These are just appointees. They are not really professors. And the university standard keeps on going down and down and down. It's the same thing with the primary and secondary education. So I ask again this question. At what point do we say enough is enough? At what point do those who actually want to develop this country, who want to actually make a difference, at what point do we say enough is enough? And put the right people in the right place. Do justice. Thank you.